I'm excited. <laughs> I'm always excited when I see the BSU people. Well, my crew with me now, baby. What's up? What? what? Come on in. Hey, the whole crew. I brought my whole crew. Oh my God! Who are these folks? Is? They are All from the state. Hey, what do you want to do? Are you trying to do Cat Williams, Jill Scott, or Ringling Brothers, Barnman Bailey Circus? You decide what we do first. At 202-432-WKYS. Good morning, DMV. Yo, what's up, man? I saw a whole bunch of folks up in here, man. Okay. Virginia State, easy. Oh, about okay. Virginia's. BSU? Yes. BSU. Yes. 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 <laughs> hey, y'all, BSU is here, y'all. Hey. Yo, BSU in the building. Yeah. 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 Come on in. Come. I hold down the midday spot here. On this station, I've been on the radio. Uh, my career has spanned uh, uh, since 1995. Uh, excuse me, 1990. Some of y'all probably weren't even born in. In fact, when this radio station was finally in Miss Hughes' ownership uh, in 1995, I was the first person you heard on the airwaves. Uh, I did the morning show here, and, and then after, uh, but I, went, I didn't go into my name though, because I, I kind of didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want everyone to know. Like I wanted them to hear me in my regular time slot, which is afternoon drive. So I went by the name of Cato Caitlin. You know the guy from the OJ trial? Oh, yeah. Was y'all born in there? Yeah. Go ahead, Brooklyn. What do you love the most about? I get the most joy about what I do by helping people. That's one of the reasons why that I fit into the Radio One uh, company uh, very well, as far as you know, uh, misuse. Kathy Hughes, the woman that started this company, that owns TV One too. Um, she has always been about community. She has always been about using this platform to help specifically African American people. So I was already, you know, prime. You know, it just fit. It just, I just fit into the puzzle of of what Radio One did. You know, my passion for my people. You know, God, my people, family, you know, all these things. You know, are very important to me. Media is a phenomenal place to work and to be and to do. A good way to start is to get an internship if you want to be on the air or in any department. If you want to be in production, internship is the way to go. If you want to be in promotion, then internship. But when it comes to on air, you have to you have to do the time. It's like Drake says, you want with me shooting in the gym? That means you have to put a lot of work to be able to get in the game. And there's only a couple of slots. You gotta look at it like this. It's on air, full time, at a normal radio station of our capacity. It's like ten slots. That's harder than the NBA. That's harder than the NFL. So you have to, and I'm not discouraging you guys, but what I'm saying is that you have to put in the work. I am Alexis Pritchett, and I'm a mass communications major. Graduating in May, let's get it. My favorite part of the exposure tour today was definitely being at Radio One. Being in that environment was just so cool and yeah, I would love to be working there, honestly. My name is Michael Green. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a mass communication major, graduating in May. I think my favorite part was when we went to Radio One, so it was my man Easy Street. Uh, it looked like my dream, uh, what I want to do when I get older. It's just a vision of the future. That's, that's all it was, really. I wish I could have took this chance earlier in my college career. I would have done more, done a lot more to get there, make sure I was there, but I'm taking the time I have and let's make what I can make of it. First of all, how did you all enjoy Radio 1? It was great. Enjoy it? Get a lot out of it? Awesome. I saw the pictures, the videos, that's good. Um, just a couple of reminders as we move forward, when you all are asking questions, make sure you speak up because you're being real timid in your mass comm majors. You're like, yes, yes, yes. And also, when you ask the questions, the people in the back can't hear you, so they don't know what you ask. And then when they answer, they don't know what they're, it's like we don't, we're lost. So just make sure you speak up. Next, we're gonna be going to our lunch symposium, and things are going to be different there than they've been in the past. So for those of you who've been with us in the past, we usually just eat lunch and sit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tour of the uh, facility, then we're going to have the lunch symposium. The guests are inside your program and you'll see that there's a full program in here to let you know what's going to happen.
the room we just left, we reference as master control because it's ultimately the end all master to everything we do. This particular one is a lesser version of uh, the other uh, control room we just saw. This is where we focus on independent and separate individual programs as opposed to the collective of master control. Tell you the hardest question you guys are going to have to answer in the next six months if you're looking for jobs or you're looking to start your business or you're looking to grow your business or whatever path you take the biggest and hardest question you're going to have to answer is tell me about yourself so when you come and talk to me i'm going to help you figure that out her eyes just got really big there is so many things you can do in communications i didn't i wanted to be a reporter and i never saw myself going into politics Never saw myself doing White House communications, working at federal agencies, two agencies, at Department of Labor, at USDA, um, working at one of the top PR firms here in Washington, D.C., which exposed me to so many things in communications and PR. For several years, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Come junior year, I still hadn't picked a major. And I don't recommend people do this, but what I did was I took our school book and I flipped through, I highlighted every course I had taken, and I did the math and said, what degree program is going to get me out the fastest? Um, what I did do throughout my college career while I was trying to kind of figure out what I wanted is I interned. I interned my life off. So how did you balance like being married and having a family and have your job as well as your career as well? Um, I was really fortunate because I had somebody that understood where I wanted to go. What you just witnessed, and I hope you remember every word that these three said, is passion. And each one of us has that passion for what we do for a living. If you don't, you won't be as happy as we are. How do you get the connection between America and the world? One of the places to come to for that is this building. and wanting information out of seriously out of all the tours. I don't know what she said. I don't know if y'all got hazed. Y'all didn't hear that from me yeah. on the way up here. But y'all seriously give your own self a round of applause because I appreciate um and, and that really means a lot to our organization because like I keep saying, I can't keep saying it enough, when these speakers come out, they're leaving their jobs, they're leaving their paying incomes to just and because they're passionate about wanting to speak to you. So thank you about that. Um, so some of the people that do or don't know me or what I've done, um, I do have an Emmy, I'm very blessed to have one. Um, but my track history comes from working on uh, hearings on Capitol Hill. Um, I was a sagging after booking agent at some point. Uh, that's a quick story behind that. I made a promise to a young lady that was on campus. I was like, yeah, you fine. I was like, I'm gonna get you a modeling job. We were just joking in school. When we got out of school, I did become a SAG agent. I got her a first Revlon ad, um, which was a really nice buyout. We're still friends today. But anyway, that was a story about that. Um, I worked under the uh, one of the mayor administrations. I was My show was one of the first 30 minute shows to cover all the gentrification that's happening in the city. It was a business economic development show. So where we just left, I was a producer there years ago. Um, and my show won the Natoa Award. And then I just kept moving. I was just trying to find more. I was a little hungry. I was trying to figure out more things to do. I worked at an Atlantic Video, which is no longer a TV, uh, no longer a TV production station here, but they used to get MTV shows. They used to get Pardon the Interruption. We got um, America's Most Wanted, a lot of old stuff that you guys probably don't even remember or know about. Um, but uh, my career has led me to, you know, becoming 
you know, basically a video journalist. And I, I'm blessed every day when I get the calls. Like my last biggest job, Kat and I worked on it together. We were covering the organizers of the Women's Day March. So we followed them for about two weeks. It was two crews, New York and us. And we basically documented the entire Women's Day March. So those are the type of stories that we tell nowadays. We do break off and we get things that come up with uh, NFL Players Association from time to time. We cover a lot of youth camps that are around uh, the NFL, but we bounce between politics. We do a lot of corporate stuff. If you guys know Eastern Motors, we work on a lot of those. Michael and Sons, we do their local commercials. And then we do the after parties for the Nerd Ball here, which is the White House Correspondents after party. So we're video storytellers. That's what we do. That's what I do now. That's what we get paid to do. And um, that's pretty much about what I do. This program, like um, Jennifer said, was just a labor of love. Um, when it comes around every year, we love doing it. We love planning it. We're going to probably do it behind the scenes of what it takes to put this together. Like we was out till 10 o'clock last night checking the meters for the bus, um, checking on like food and lunch, looking at our budget. It was like, oh shoot, that money ain't come through yet. We got to pay for lunch tomorrow. So we're, but, but we want to do it. And we want to make sure that everyone that comes on the trip gets a good experience. So have you? Did you guys get a good experience yes. so far? Yes. That's all we want to hear. Um, and at some point, we'll tap you off with testimonies because we've had people leave here that have won can awards. We got young ladies that are working at um, the NFL, uh, NFL Films. We got fellows working in NBC. We got people just spread out, and all they did was just kind of just follow their passion. If it's something that you want, if you go get it. Whatever God that's you do, that's what you're going to do. So it's speaking to you. Everybody in here probably already knows what they're supposed to do and what they would like to do at this current time, like all our speakers have said. Just follow suit and do it. Don't waste that time that God have you here doing. Don't waste it. Seriously. You know, and, and it's our job to be able to cultivate y'all as the next minds because I'm growing gray hair, gray hair on my beard. I, you know, we're always trying to find the next Don, the next cat. The next um, Je uh, um, Jeff and the next Megan and the next Kamal. We're trying to find the next everyone because we that's what we're supposed to do. So when you guys get to the point where you are in our lives, I got to pay it forward and do the same thing. All right? My name is Daze Compton and my major is Mass Communications at VSU. My ultimate goal is to have my own television show. Um, and really, before so, I would like to be more so like an entrepreneur. Um, I honestly felt like I gained something from everybody speaking, honestly, even if it was through radio or television. I felt like I learned a lot. Okay, my name is Marissa Moore and I attend Virginia State University. Of course, we are all communications majors and yes, we are all nervous, but everyone was so eager and willing to hear our passion and wanted us to talk, you know, a lot more than what we wanted to a little bit. So that was kind of exciting, you know, not to be so quiet, but to bring the personality out in us and encourage us to network with them. We are Virginia State Trojans and we have been exposed.